had enough time to have the kind of mind renewal that they needed to have, to have the kind of courage that would be required to fight a fight that was going to be fixed. This is something here. This is something. Because it shows me that how far I go, how much I grow, is not just determined by what I believe about God. It is also impacted by what I believe about me. Did you hear what I just said? I could take you to scripture and show you in Numbers 13, Israel does not occupy Canaan land in Numbers 13, not because they saw God wrong. They didn't see themselves right. The text says, they said, we were as grasshoppers. Listen to what they said, in our eyes. And in their eyes also. See, they didn't lose to the giants out there. They lost to the grasshopper in here. I want to show you what the Holy Spirit showed me. He showed me that, the, that there is, and it should be, that there is an emphasis in a lot of Christian circles on humility, which is important, which is appropriate, avoiding arrogance. I get it. Pride. But here's what I saw. That the same enemy that influences people to operate in arrogance is the same enemy that also influences people to operate in inadequacy. And inadequacy has assassinated just as many assignments as arrogance. The enemy doesn't want you to know who God is, and the enemy don't want you to know who you are. You want to know how I know it's important for you to know who you are? Because God spends a lot of time in the Bible telling you. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Because as a man or woman thinketh in his heart, so is he. God knows you will behave in a way that is consistent with the way you see yourself. So he keeps telling you and me what he thinks about you and me. So that what we think about ourselves can line up with what he thinks about us. So we can behave in a way that reflects what he thinks about us, not what we think about ourselves. And I just need to remind you, you the head, not the tail. You above only, not the knee. You are a lender, not a borrower. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. You are blessed when you go in. You are blessed when you come out. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment, God will condemn. You are the apple of his eye. You are not just a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You are his blood. You are his anointing. And the scriptures teach, touch not my anointing. Do my servant no harm. Amen. Text says, no, they... They don't know who they are yet. So text says, he leads them around toward the Red Sea. Now see, I grew up in church. I don't have a, I've been at church, I've been in church my whole life. I'm 44, I've been in church, 44 years, nine months. <laughs> so this Sunday school, it was vacation Bible school. It was Sunday evening service. I've been in church. And I've heard the story of the Red Sea. But it was only when I read this text for myself that I saw the Red Sea was a result of them following God's leading. Amen. That the only reason they have the Red Sea experience it's because God led them that way. Wait a minute. God, why are you leading them this way? Because the route God takes is to give you a revelation of who he is that you didn't have. And the revelation of who you are that he didn't have. Pastor, why do you know? Because I kept reading the narrative. And when I kept reading the narrative, what I saw is something very interesting. I saw that as Israel is 
poised uh, to, as they're pondering, excuse me, as Moses is pondering what to do regarding the, 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 the Red Sea, something very, very interesting happens. In Exodus chapter 14, verse number 19, it says, Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. Listen to the text. Coming between the, enemy. the armies of Israel and Egypt throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. So the first thing that happens is when Moses moves, God moves behind them and got between what was chasing Israel and Israel. And see, not only did he do it in their exodus, he's done it in our exodus. He's the God that will get between some things. <laughs> Here it was a cloud, right? Um, in Job, it's called the hedge. When, when God, I say, have you considered my servant Job? Uh, 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 Satan said, yeah, but you got a hedge around him, his household, and everything he possesses. You've got a hedge around him, his household, and everything he possesses. Satan said that to God. God didn't say that to Satan. So how would Satan know that there's a hedge around Job, his household, and everything he possesses unless Satan had tried to get to Job and couldn't because the hedge got in the way. Can we just take seven seconds and thank God for a hedge?